So you got all these Silicon Valley robotics companies, and they're all going to solve the world's problems with AI. And you can think of the three or four companies I'm thinking about. Yep. And they have these very high-priced people working or running reinforcement learning systems to teach their robot how to grip something instead of sitting down, figuring out what the basic principles are and working it out. I don't think they're all going to succeed because I think their payrolls are outrageous. And I think they don't chase the fundamentals of their business very well. It's going to be interesting to watch. Oh, I see what you're talking about. So just these companies like burning money on these far out projects. Yeah. Or trying to solve robot problems that are fundamental problems with, oh, well, AI will fix that. We'll schedule that. It, it we'll is an interesting that. thing, though, because if you do get that to work, it's pretty amazing. But I if mean, you I'm... get it to work and the whole reason for doing it is when you have a fantastically changing environment. Yep. You need that kind of thing that can tune and tweak itself. But well, if I someone... think the other idea is just removing the setup costs. Like if you didn't have to have a programmer on site, I mean, would be like the value prop. But I mean, I don't think we're there yet either. I have heard that one a lot for a long time, right? That was the whole thing behind Baxter and Rethink Robotics was reduce the setup cost. Oh, you have to hire engineers. Set up. What happened to them? Oh, yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> it didn't last that long. It didn't last that long. Once the robot's running is when it's making your money. 